Welcome back to Exhausted Reviews, where I'm exhausted that I make reviews, and today we have the return of the world's greatest mommy lolly in Masamune-kun's Revenge R. Now this show, this is like, what, 10 years in the making? I never thought this show would come out, honestly. It's just one of the first shows that I watched when I got into anime. I watched this all the way through. I think it was still airing at the time, and I just completely forgot about this show. It always had a special place in my heart. It is on my anime list. One of the few shows I actually do have on my anime list because those things get outdated all the time. It's hard to keep up. But season two is finally here, you know? And let's talk about it because I'm, it's pretty good so far. I kind of forgot why the show entranced me so much and it's because of the interpersonal drama is really good. There's a lot of scheming. And there's a lot of going behind people's backs going on. Basically, to recap the first season, Masamune-kun is... Was a fat kid who got bullied by the pretty girl of the show. Now he got fit to try to prove to her... Or to try to break her heart and trick her into falling in love with him. But during the course, we learned that the maid is also on Masamune's side. But he goes, she likes him or something? And... There's also an imposter who's trying to take Masamune-kun's place, saying that he was the kid from when they were young, and she's kind of, the girl's the main girl is kind of going along with it. It's a whole, there's a whole lot of webs and lies. There was this girl with the, the brown hair, I think she was like, the girl with the brown hair, where is she? This is the femme, the femme boy. The girl with the, right there with the little loop, she was like, I'm your wife or something she pulled up in the car one day and was like your mind or something it, it was all very uh it was all very weird honestly but the, you know the show the show really pulls it pulls everything together and now apparently they're in france so they're in france for the school field trip and they meet this otaku french girl this nerdy french girl wearing an eye patch like she's some kind of chunibyo and she was trying to make a manga and these two are not interested in helping her make manga until they get freaking accosted by some goons in an alley. Literally, some thugs pull up on them in an alley. And freaking... It's, it's they're literally thugs just like in the alley. It's wild. This is, the, this is truly why you should never go overseas. If this is what's going on in France right now, I can understand why people don't want to be here. But anyways, we move on. You know, they get back together and they're trying to do like... What's typical rom-com stuff? They want to help out this girl. And they end up holding hands for a little bit. And uh, what's what else is going on? There's this stuff in the background with the two side characters. I'm not really too concerned about these guys. Except for at the end. When the maid and the fake Masamune are walking. And he, she's trying to keep him, she's trying to keep Masamune, this guy away. The fake Masamune away from the real one. So they can get some time alone. And he catches on really quick. And he's like, man, I feel bad for you. Because if anybody ever saw this picture, you'd be toast. And that's how the first episode of season two ends. With Fake Masamune threatening to reveal the secret to her. To her. Or that they're at least collaborating together. So let's, I'll, let's jump into episode two. And then we'll get to the sort of uh, review of the whole thing. Because episode two has some craziness happen in it. So she is like, you know what, do it. And he's like, fine, I'll do it. Your parents are mad at you. Which is wild. She is donezo. Her career is over. In France. Imagine getting fired while you're in France. I could, a guy like me couldn't do it. So they're here trying to do their little... <laughs> it's fun seeing them pretend to be a couple and try, attempt to pretend to try to feed each other. Literally trying to feed him. literally trying to feed him look at it's it's honestly kind of amazing it was honestly fun to watch seeing them uh cosplay as a couple but then you know season one was a little bit more lighthearted. they ended it with a little bit of a a little bit of a tease for the next episode but this episode is where we get her backstory and we see things from her point of view and she was a kid who didn't have many friends and her parents were getting divorced and masamune's fat ass was getting bullied outside of her door and while everybody was trying to appeal to her with money, Masamune was just hanging out with her because they were cool. So apparently she remembers them being friends. Although she did, I could see how 
he might get triggered by her making the dogs chase after him. I'm like, <laughs> you're trying to make him skinny and stuff. So I feel like I remember, when I was watching this, I was like, yeah, I do kind of remember him saying like, I could see how him be with he might have been like, she used to chase me with her dogs and make fun of me. <laughs> so obviously there's a clear line of miscommunication because she remembers him having a grand old time and then never seeing him again. And then we cut to the scene right here where it's it's the fateful night where he's trying to to get her to save him and she pulls up and says why would i ever save you but she doesn't remember that as we can see we don't see her eyes here this is from masamune's point of view so it seems like we have an interloper among us we have a, some kind of threat i'm thinking it's the maid i think the maid when she was a kid chased away masamune because she wanted, she was jealous and she wanted him to himself. They kind of allude to that in this episode. And, you know, they ruin, they ruin her, her erotic role play with their arguing. Because he actually goes off on her. He's like, bro, you deserve everything you, that came towards you. Bro, he, he did not play. He did not hold back. And her, of course, being, being big mad, she decides to leave. And then she meets back up with fake Masamune, runs right past him, and then goes and hugs up on her little maid friend. And then she's like, bro, I did the same thing eight years ago, which is exactly what they were talking about in the flashback. So honestly, like the way the show, I don't think the characters are too like one dimensional. I think the characters, for the most part, are more than just tropes. They're pretty fully well realized. And I think that's what really drew me into this show, was seeing Masamune trying to, kind of trying to go through this revenge story, but also realizing that, like, you know, the, the Ice Princess or whatever had the softer side to her. This was kind of giving me uh, Kaguya-sama vibes <laughs> before Kaguya-sama was a thing. Because you get the maid of the rich girl trying to meddle and interfere slash help slash have a crush on the main guy who is trying to get the other the main girl to fall in love with her it's it's a whole little uh diet love is war with that as much emphasis on this is definitely more of a slice of life kind of show and that's pretty good because this show it really doesn't have to be more than that it's just fun i'm really glad to see the show back the show was really fun really good stuff and if you guys are enjoying this, let me know. I'm going to check out some other rom-coms. Hope, and I'll definitely will be keeping up with this weekly. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. See ya.